Sachsen's question is, and this is of course a very sensible question, how is the step made from a particular hypothesis true in a model world to the truth of that hypothesis in the real world? And that's exactly the right question, right? So we have in the model world, say in the, on the checkerboard example, we have that, that weak uh, racial preferences produce um, segregation. So it's true there and it's robust so we can reproduce it and uh, vary some dimensions and what are the other parameters. And then the question is, what's the, how is the step made then from that particular hypothesis true in the model world to the truth of that hypothesis in the real world? Right? And you say, yeah, here, that's the problem. And the, the problem he discussed with caricature and all that, they say they don't, they don't really give you an explanation. You know, they, they are just stories, but they don't explain it, and I want to really explain it. Okay, so. According to Sutton, this step is inductive. Right? This is what he says. And what, this is why I explained to you now in great detail uh, what the problems here of inductive inference are. The step is inductive. And um, the, the significant similarity that uh, Sutton wants to identify in order to justify this inductive step is there is a causal factor F both in the model world and in the real world, and F creates, therefore, the significant similarity between the two worlds. Well, he says, look, what is fundamental here is we have the same causal factor both in the models and in the real world, and that creates that sort of similarity like that with these different pieces of uh, metal that they are all copper. And that creates the similarity, a significant similarity, that then enables me to make an inductive inference. Okay, let's look at a little more detail. The significant similarity licenses an inductive generalization from the model world to the real world. Right? So the argument seems to be very good. You know, it says, yeah, I, I know it, it's an inductive step. Of course, inductive steps are risky, and you're only allowed if you find something that justifies that they all belong to one natural kind, and that is justifies if you find some essential property, right, that all of them have that shows that they are really one natural kind, and therefore you can, from one subset, uh, go to, to another subset, make an inductive inference. So this is... Right, yes, significant similarity, okay? If causal, and then the consequences, if causal factor explains regularity R in the model world, then it can be generalized that F also explains R in the real world. Clearly, yeah, that's the inductive step, right? You learn that in that subset, you have a natural kind, and then you can say, yes, that holds also in the rest of it, as in the 10 pieces of copper that conduct electricity. And then you say copper conducts electricity also in other cases. <coughs> yeah. Well, no, uh, it, it's, w w this he says, yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, he, sees, he says, we see the, the results both in the real world and in the model world, in the model world and in the real world. And then we see the factor, the causal factor, and then we say, okay, if we have that same causal factor in the real world, then of course it's plausible that it produces, um, um, again, segregation, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, wait a moment, because it doesn't work anyway. I'll show you why. <coughs> okay. At least um, I, I'm trying to make it here as, as plausible as possible, first of all. But you are right, there is something, um, because he doesn't really see the causality. You're absolutely right, but this is what he, what he postulates here. But that's not the main weakness, I think. Okay, so uh, he thinks that there is this significant similarity um, that licenses the inductive generalization for the model world to the real world. And you are right, what he really sees is only the effects, and then he uh, uh, concludes that. But uh, okay. And uh, then he says, if causal factor F explains regularity R in the model world, then it can be generalized that F also explains R in the real world, right? That would presuppose that he has really shown the same uh, causality. But this is, of course, an assumption that goes in here, unnoted. But that's not, not even the main weakness, I think, anyway. <coughs> 
So, but uh, in general, the logic is fine that he's using, right? If, if you want to generalize from, from a subset uh, to the full set, then of course uh, they must have something essential in common because then they form a natural kind and that's equivalent uh, to being able to inductively generalize. And, and of course it, it, it looks as if the, the model world and the real world just um, uh, have these properties. <coughs> now, uh, now here's the observation, uh, namely that this is not quite as easy uh, because uh, in normally inductive generalization works from some cases of X to all cases of X, right? And all cases of X form a natural kind. For instance, the copper pieces. That's the normal situation in which you, and, and that all, all that stuff about natural kinds and induction uh, comes from such cases. Uh, you have some cases of X, you have a class of X. Here it is somewhat different because uh, the case is somewhat different because Sutton uh, wants to infer from model cases to real cases. So f that looks inhomogeneous, right? That's not the same. So he wants to, wants to make that inference. And therefore, Sutton wants to argue that real cities of a, a, a particular kind and specific theoretical models form one single natural kind, right? That says they together, the models and the real, they together form a natural kind. So the uh, conjunction of model cities and real cities uh, form a natural kind. Because if they do that, then you are licensed to do the inductive step. So and th this is somewhat different from the copper case. Um, he says the relevant models are instances of some category, some of whose instances actually exist in the real world. Instances are examples. And what he says here is the same category is another term here for the same natural kind. You know, that's the same natural kind. It's a category of things. And there he says, in my case, the relevant models are instances of the same category, namely these um, cities, models, or real cities with uh, weak uh, preferences that then lead to segregation. Some of those instances actually exist in the real world. So he doesn't say he used the, the, uh, used, introduced the, the term category here. I would much prefer to say he, he would have said natural kind, but this is what he said, what he's saying, and, and what's necessary, otherwise uh, his argument doesn't work. Right? So this is what he's trying to say. And um, he, then he wants to argue that such that it can inductively infer from one of its subsets, namely the model cities, to the other one, namely the real cities. And that's the idea. So he says, okay, Let's look at it the right way, then we see, oh, because of the same causality, they all form one natural kind, and I can investigate one part of that natural kind, namely the model things, and because it's a natural kind, I can inductively then infer to the rest, namely to the, to the real cities. That, that's the idea. In principle, good idea, yes. And Sutton argues for a significant similarity between Schelling's model cities and real cities regarding the causality at work, where you put your finger and said, Wood, that's a little fishy, but it's, even f it's much, much more fishy. It's much, much worse, much, much worse. And then he says, it is credible that for the same effect in the models and in reality, the same causes are responsible. And there you see he doesn't presuppose that the cause is the same. He says it's, it's plausible. Right? So it, it's exactly where you put your finger on. This is a little unclear because he cannot show that the same causality is there. He just assumes that and then for the same effects, it's credible that um, the, uh, the, the same causes are responsible. But here's the problem. So in effect, Sutton argues that the identity of causes and effects of model cities and real cities constitutes their common membership in the same natural kinds, right? There he says, well, they have the same causality and therefore we are allowed to infer from the uh, models uh, to, the, to the real world. This licenses then the uh, inductive step from models to reality. So we saw already this is a little tricky here with the causality, but it's much, much worse even. <coughs> now, what I claim here is namely that in the model world, um, the real causal factors are completely different from the ones in the real world. This is just absolutely false. Uh, it's absolutely and, and unhealable false. Unhealably false. I give you an example. Uh, uh, in the model world, there are representations or models of the causal factors in the real world. Right? What you do in the model when you say that um, uh, weak racial preferences produce segregation, these are the racial preferences that you have there. It's just the constellations of these chips. Right? It's something very different 
from the constellations when you have real human beings with intentions and preferences and so on. So one is a representation of the other. And to give you an, exact, an example where you see immediately what the, the, the matter is, imagine you have a real ship and that ship swims. It's afloat, right? And then you have a representation of that ship, an image in a picture in which the ship is above the sea. So the ship swims on the sea. And now you ask, what's the causality? In the real case, well, it's called buoyancy, auftrieb, right? That keeps the ship afloat. What is it in the image? Is there real buoyancy? Forget it. It's the, the, the color particles, the paint particles sitting on the underground, right? That keeps the ship afloat in the picture. So the causality of swimming on an ocean in the image is completely different from the causality of the real ship swimming on the ocean. So it's just false. The causality is utterly different, utterly different. There's no similarity whatsoever, right? That's the difference between a really swimming ship and really uh, uh, color paint uh, sitting, sticking to the underground, right? That's very different causality, really very completely different. So it's absolutely false. It's not the same causal factors in a model. The model represents causal factors, but that's something else. The causality itself is completely different. The real causality of the model world, if you run it on a computer, is the electrons of the computer that executes the program. Right? This is happening physically. I mean, you have, you have a certain initial state, which is given by the hardware, and then you put the uh, software on it, and then you give the data for the initial state. That's the initial state of the system, and then you press go, which means you switch the battery on or whatever, and then uh, soft hardware plus software lets the electron run, and then it comes to a stop. That's the end state, and then you look at the end state, you read off the result, right? And then you say, this is the end result. But the causality is done by the electrons. Right, that run around in there, that's just uh, electricity, right? Running around in, in that computer, right? So it's completely different from what people do, black and white people somewhere in an American city. That's not, well, they're in their heads, uh, electrons are also running around, but nobody knows how, how that really works. But it's certainly different from what in the computer is happening, what these people are doing. So it's just absolutely false. It's the causality there in the cities. And an image, a representation of the causality, but the causality itself is different. So you do not get this homogeneity that you need for a natural kind. That's an illusion because the causality is utterly different. So the step from the model world to the real world cannot be an inductive step based on the identity of causal factors because the causal factors are utterly different, right? incredibly different. So that can't be right. There is something deeply wrong. Right? That can't be the case. Um, all right. That's a problem. <clears throat> and uh, he uses, uh, that's interesting, it uh, took me also some time uh, to, uh, to see that, uh, why, I mean, when you read the paper, I, I think, as I said, the paper is wonderfully composed. He's really knowing what he's doing. He's developing this, uh, this topic. And then if you read that inductive set, you say, yes, I think that's it's much better than all the alternatives. But he's really tricking at one point. He masks the implausibility of his inductive step by the following rhetorical trick. Uh, he starts with a plausible assumption. Large industrial cities in northeast United States featuring racial segregation form a natural kind, licensing inductive inferences to the next case. So he says here we have 10 of these cities uh, in United States, and then if you look at Cleveland, yes, then you can generalize and say, yeah, probably the same situation in Cleveland, and there we have indeed um, an inductive inference from 10 known cases to the 11th case. And Sutton re-describes that each city constitutes a model of the forces at work in large industrial northeastern U.S. cities. He calls it a natural model. So uh, this is somewhat, when you read that first, you say, wait a minute, that's a model? No, usually that's a rhetorical trick. Normally, one would call every single case an example of the forces at work. 
right? So, so what he has in mind, you know, we have the forces at work are um, uh, weak racial preferences, right? They produce a deep segregation, and, and it's the same forces at work, um, and, and, and therefore that's a natural kind of these cities with these uh, weak racial preferences, and therefore that's a natural kind, and therefore we can generalize, you know, from 10 cities to the 11th. And then he says, he describes that each city constitutes a model of the forces at work, right? He doesn't... He just read the sentence. Uh, he just says it's uh, a model, okay? Uh, a natural model. Yeah, it's not an artificial model, it's a model. And you say, yeah, fine, why, why not a model? Yeah, well, normally one would call every single instance an example of the first, not a model. You wouldn't, why, why should he say it? He does call the example. Why does he call the examples now natural models? Why does he do that? Well, you see that one sentence further down. If we can take, if we can make inductive inferences from natural models, why not from theoretical ones, right? So if every real city is a model, a, a natural model, then we can also use why not other other models as well, right? Theoretical models. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that's plausible, isn't it? This is a suggestive rhetorical question, you know, where he says yes, this makes plausible that we make an inductive inference because as we do with natural models, also with theoretical models, namely the economic models. This is a, a suggestive rhetorical question which exploits the displacement of example by natural model, and it's implied assimilation to theoretical model. Um, the above rhetorical question, namely, well, but if we can make inf uh, inductive inferences from natural models, one from theoretical ones, of course this answer is yes, we can. It's an inductive step. It's fine, right? If you now replace in that sentence model with the, by the much more appropriate term examples, but if we can make inductive inferences from examples, why not from theoretical models? Well, if, if you can make an inductive inference from 10 American cities to the 11th, fine. And therefore you should make an inductive inference from theoretical models? No. Impossible, right? But he redescribes that, and that's a trick. He describes an example, right, or the examples as natural models, and then he says, oh, natural models should work the same way as theoretical models. Now, that's, of course, not true, right? One is an example, and the other is a the theoretical model, and the plausibility of the inductive step dis completely disappears. So this is really a rhetorical trick, an unfair one. I, I don't know how much he's aware of it, I don't know. But anyway, once you analyze it, you see this is a rhetorical trick with no uh, argumentative power. The conclusion is induction works where it works only within natural kinds due to some fundamental homogeneity among their elements. Copper pieces. He gets that, Sakten gets this piece of induction right, he understands that. But there is no fundamental homogeneity between the set of model cities and real cities created by a common causality, such that we can exploit it in inductive inferences. Their causality is utterly different. It's just not there. So theoretical models of cities are utterly different in their causality from the real cities. And therefore, there can't be an inductive step between these two. It's just not right. What sounds plausible first, if you look at it a little more closely, doesn't work, unfortunately. Thus, the step from model city to real cities cannot be inductively justified. So I think that uh, Sakten's explanation or Sakten's attempt here fails. <coughs> and therefore, we need an alternative approach. And